Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. I think there are more Seiko watches than there are fish in the oceans. Okay, maybe that's a slight exaggeration. But Seiko has watches for every budget level and of every type. This is especially true of vintage Seiko pieces. There are divers, chronographs, dress watches, and just about any category you can think of. And many of these are icons in their own right, such as the Pogue, the Speed Timers, the Bullhead. I was going to wait and do a video on several vintage Seiko pieces that I own, but I just acquired this King Seiko High Beat and wanted to share it. I knew it was a looker when I bought it, but in person, I just want to say, wow. Let's take a look. The reference is 4502-8000, and it was developed by the Daini Division of Seiko to compete head-to-head -head with the 61GS of their in-house rivals at Suwa. The 61GS, of course, is the lustworthy early Grand Seiko model. This King Seiko is a high beat, meaning that it purrs along at 36,000 beats per hour. It generally thought of that the higher the movement frequency, the more accurate the watch. And that's what Seiko was going for when they developed these early King Seiko and Grand Seiko watches. Compared with the 4500 movement, the 2 in this reference number signifies that the addition of a date function uh, is present. And this is a manually wound watch. This model KS was one of the last of the hand-built movements for the King Seiko line and was in fact the last 36,000 movements Daini would produce. I know this sounds a lot like inside baseball, but the Seiko Heritage and Grand Seiko, King Seiko, Lord Marvel and others are significant horologically and an important part of vintage Seiko watch collecting. Many of the King Seikos were rated as chronometers, which had a higher level of accuracy compared to watches in the regular or midline of Seiko watches, or for that matter, compared to their competition. Let's take a look at some basic specs of this King Seiko. The diameter is uh, 38.1 millimeters which is actually kind of large given the, the time frame that this watch was made in 1969. The thickness is 9.5 millimeters and I just love those. We can get a good shot of it here. Look at those curved, curved lugs. They are just, if I may say so just sexy excellent excellent lugs I love the way this thing hugs the wrist the strap lug width is uh, 19 millimeters so a little bit on the unusual side but Seiko seems to like those those odd size strap widths especially in the Grand Seikos and finally the lug to lug distance from here to here is a very small 42.1 millimeters. Well, let's a close look at the dial. You can see that it's really a nice, a nice shade of gray. So the case is a cushion or pillow design with polished top and brushed chamfered edges and of course the case back has that famous gold KS medallion at the center. This is one of the highlights I think of the watch. Look at the edges, the chamfered edges. Very, very nice.
Many vintage Seiko watches of this era, which also had the medallion on the back, are, are often in poor condition, with the medallion highly worn or sometimes not even visible. On this piece, it's almost perfect. There's no degradation, which adds to the visual appeal of the watch, at least when it's off the wrist. Obviously, when it's on the wrist, you don't see the medallion, but you still know it's there. The case is unpolished, with the original finishes intact, and the case back is extremely sharp. You can see the edges on the corners of the case back. Very, very sharp. No over polishing. Just a real fine, a real fine example. This particular King Seiko is from April 1969. I think it's it's really a rare delight, even by vintage standards. As I understand it, the reference is often seen with a cross-hatched linen dial in white. Although I've never seen one of these, I'm sure it's beautiful. But I think this particular model with the gray dial is also beautiful. The dial variation in matte dove gray sunburst, which is what this is, is, is I'd say, absolutely pristine. It's got a rich texture, and the texture, as I showed before, almost seems like it might be soft to the touch. Notice that really fine track around the perimeter. And of course, being a high beat at 36,000 beats per hour, look at that second hand. That sweeps almost as nicely as my spring drive. Not quite as smooth, but very, very smooth. And also notice the, uh, the detailed applied markers. We can see those if I get it just right in the light. And tapered baton hands with the black inlay. So you got to look very close to see that. A little trouble focusing, but really a nice touch. This vintage piece has an instant change date. And I always like to see how the date rolls over at midnight, since in some ways, I think this is the measure of quality of the movement. And you can see from the video that you're seeing right now that it changes about a minute and a half before midnight, but it is instantaneous. Of course, it's a manual wind watch, as I mentioned before. The date is quick set. Pull the crown out to the first stop, and you can change the date only in the forward direction. So if you miss a date, you have to go all the way around. And lastly, if you're curious, this strap is a, um, a clockwork synergy strap. It's a light brown distressed leather with reverse stitch. And I think it's a very good choice for this particular piece. Overall, I am so impressed with this watch. Definitely a keeper in my collection. Lastly, as far as accuracy goes, if you look at the time grapher shot above, this is pretty impressive for a 48-year-old a watch. Almost 50-year-old watch. And it's got roughly plus one second a day accuracy. That's just amazing. I've been on the hunt, you watch collectors know what I mean, for a King Seiko high beat for more than a year. And I'm fortunate to have found this particular specimen. It's unique, rather uncommon, at least in this grade, 
and was clearly worth the wait. It's often almost impossible to capture the full aesthetic of a watch in photographs. The cliche that you really need to see and fondle a watch in person to appreciate it is really true. At least I think so. I hope this video allows more than a hint of the quality and perfection of this King Seiko piece. What a timeless style. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please hit the like button below. You can also hit the subscribe button to be alerted of future videos. And feel free to share the video with your friends and fellow watch collectors. And be sure to check out some of my other videos on the channel. Thanks again. See you next time.